So just so you know, just so you have context, whatever it is that you're going through, when you're talking about, when we are talking about are you okay and you want to have that conversation or you've got that shit on your chest that you just need to get off, just know that nearly every single one of you here right now has been through something in the last six months. So it's not just you. And that's the issue. Who I am and what I'm doing at the mines. A real meta answer, besides my name being Lockie Samuel, is <laughs> um, I'm an ex FIFO worker who struggled a hell of a lot, um, who had a partner who struggled, who lost friends to suicide, um, and I've been given a really good opportunity to come back as a new version of me who's learnt a lot, turned pain into purpose, and now essentially that's what I do is I come here and be vulnerable enough that I hopefully compel people to, to step up and find the courage to be vulnerable too. If it means just having one uh, one on one conversation with me after the workshop um, or the seminar, whatever it is that I facilitate, then that's, that's the end goal for me personally. Um, but I guess the end goal for the industry is to no longer need people like me. Three Next three days here at De Grey's with Top Drill. What we're going to be doing is workshops, and the workshops that we're going to be delivering back to back to back over the next three days, cow. Um, <laughs> over the next three days is Pillar One, which is essentially lived experience, like I spoke about, and then uh, emotional set points achievement versus fulfillment and then going over feel think act so because we need to att attain that target or achieve having people understand just how impactful their feelings are how that determines to a large extent um, what they think and then how their thoughts in conjunction with their feelings determine to a large extent how they show up and the, how they behave and how that over time can become unconscious um, patterns and loops that people fall into and get stuck in. Um, and then diving into the emotion just a tiny bit, which then leads to organically having these conversations with people one-on-one -on -one who I feel need it or who want to stick around and get something off their chest, just leads into going a little bit deeper into the emotion so that we can peel that layer back so that maybe we can reframe for a lot of people what is sadness underneath anger and frustration reframe sadness uh, into hope, hope, joy, relief. Um, so back-to-back -back sessions, and then on September 9, Are You Okay Day? On Thursday, we've got a breakfast, where both of us will wake up super duper early. <laughs> and then it'll just be a talk about the importance of not just asking, are you okay, but reaching out for help and being willing to receive support. Can you tell me your name first and what's your role here? Uh, my name is Nasser and I'm uh, one of the field in um, the group. I think it was uh, fantastic, you know, the presentation was amazing, you know, we read a lot, you know, we learned a lot today, so... So that's why I'm here, that's why FIFO Happiness exists, that's why I love doing what I do, that's why when I talk about the preemptive and getting out and being in front of people, that's why, it's because I believe very deeply and passionately that we don't have to suffer as an industry. FIFO bros and sisters don't, don't have to suffer. We don't have to go to the point where we feel like it's necessary to do something like take our own life, to do something like hurt someone else. All it takes is seeing someone like me and then maybe having a conversation afterwards, maybe allowing that to filter through and then hopefully you start to start having more deeper, more meaningful conversations where people can peel back those layers, peel back that mask of being rough and tumble, of being stoic in the mining industry and have conversations where you actually get to be yourself for a change. Because when you do allow yourself to be yourself, that's when life starts to change. you the time.
mental strain before I started no I don't I don't think anyone is um, for me personally I guess the biggest strain was going into FIFO as someone who although I was in a relationship um, because I was a cheating narcissist I just showed up as someone who was single anyway so I lived a very um, single-esque lifestyle and didn't really have too much care in the world and so when I did then get a partner who was in Kalgoorlie with me and um, driving in and out, flying in and out, leaving her and being away from her. Um, that's when the issues started coming up and um, didn't realize it back then, but reflecting, looking back at that, um, a lot of the issues come from just not being able to communicate well, not being able to like identify my wants and needs, not being able to empathize um, and give compassion to my partner who just missed me a lot. And then, you know, within that, just being stubborn and, and stuck up and not really wanting to budge on, on how I felt or acknowledge how I felt. So a lot of the issues come from not being able to communicate effectively in that relationship. And for a lot of people, that's, that's where the stress, the suffering, the overwhelm, the anxiety comes from, is, is that lack of communication, the lack of the ability to have the hard conversation. I think there hasn't been, no, scratch that, not I think, there hasn't been anything like this. Like it's, it's a really beautiful mix of what Happiness Co were doing and then what I was doing um, with Open Up uh, on Minds, essentially. What I was doing was going out, doing these presentations, mental health de-escalation, a little bit of my story and then going back to camp and doing men's circles and you know having brothers come into got given a one room at, at each camp I went to and they'd send out a text blast and be like everyone Lockie's going to be in this room at this time for this long if you want to go chat go see him and then we'd end up having a bunch of brothers just coming in and sharing what they were going through and Later, bro. To be honest, um, just uh, the takeaway was just uh, self-awareness for uh, mental health. Um, I, before I actually came here, I didn't even know it exist, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but then when I came and I realized how serious it is and um, the things that he take us through, it was really real and um, it's some of the issues that we need to focus on for future reference. It would have been nice to know or see just how poorly I was showing up, um, to understand the impact of, of steroids on me and my body image, to, to understand that messaging other girls are cheating, how much impact that had on my partner, how much, ultimately how much hurt I was causing. You know, I remember being on site and being super aggressive when people told me I was wrong or challenged me and then you know asking people to fight and I remember asking my older brother to fight and that was a real real low for me just before I got um, forced out of my four in one gig at Sino. I've grown um, in the way that I show up when I talk about that, that deep-seated belief in myself. Before there was always the sense of I'm going to speak and I'm going to speak really well and I know I'll speak well but because there was that that feeling of not being enough that undercurrent 
I'd always show up and show up powerfully and then as soon as I was finished doing my thing I would shut off and really close off and isolate myself because I didn't feel worthy of um, number one being seen but number two the, the, the recognition like appreciation that would come off the back of it and so um, I guess for me identifying that and seeing that and having the people around me be so supportive really call me forward to step into what it's like to receive appreciation and what it's like to be worthy of being someone who is appreciated who is worthy of being in a leadership role uh, that's probably the biggest and, biggest and biggest and biggest thing hello so how are you feeling after all this <laughs> oh i'm feeling good um, after the last couple of sessions, after the one-on-ones, visiting the guys at the rig, I really feel like I'm in a place where I, where I have trust with people and ultimately that's what I want to get to, is having a level of trust. So FIFO workers that are struggling, most companies have an EAP, um, it's an employee assistance program, and it'll be all the posters stuck up or on the back of the toilet doors, in the crib rooms, in the offices, whatever, whatever your EAP provider is. And you know, I'd really encourage people to reach out to those, those people because they're psychologists, they're people who are trained to sit and listen to these conversations. Yeah, they might, might not have worked FIFO, they might not understand the lifestyle, but if you speak to that person, if you call that person, you know you're going to have someone who is ready and willing and is trained to listen to you. They can approach me and they can approach me with anything. Um, and then this one today is just really cool to be given a chance to speak into Are You OK Days. So just so you know, just so you have context, whatever it is that you're going through, when you're talking about, when we are talking about Are You OK and you want to have that conversation or you've got that shit on your chest that you just need to get off, just know that nearly every single one of you here right now has been through something in the last six months. So it's not just you. And that's the issue is that for a lot of us, we think it's just us, so we keep it to ourselves. Keep it to ourselves because we don't want to be judged. And I'm sure you've seen through my presentation and sharing so vulnerably being so Yeah, I, I, I believe that it is it is something that we need to be focusing on more. You know, generations are changing, people are changing, expectations, um, from the workplace are changing and we can't keep going like we have in the past. We have to move with the times and uh, make sure that we we deal with those sorts of people and those sorts of issues that arise. We know mental health and suicide, as Fish said, it's, it's huge. It's a big, big issue. You know, these people are doing it pretty tough and anything that we can do is just getting um, Lockie in to have a talk and if that elicits a response and people talk about it, that's a good thing. Uh, speak about what I've been seeing, be honest with the guys around, you know, I've had a bunch of one-on-one -on -one conversations, this is the depth of what's here, what the undercurrent is with, with the workforce, with the, with the organism, with the collective, uh, be it the Greys, Top Drill, Wallace, whoever, um, and a lot of that is really deep childhood trauma, you know, so um, it's nice to just look in, in on what's here so that hopefully in, in conjunction with my story and feeling like they have some level of trust with me that sort of compels them to take action on a, on a day like Are You OK Day. So yeah, overall, pretty, pretty bloody happy, man.